Hello everybody. I hope uh, you're all doing well. Uh, so we're going to look at a problem on uh, zero force members. Uh, before I go into the problem, I want to very briefly go over the three criteria that uh, we use uh, to obtain zero force members by inspection. And when I say inspection, it means that we essentially do not solve for the forces. We just see if uh, at each and every pin, uh, the criteria, one of the criteria for the zero force members is satisfied and then uh, we thereby select the zero force members based on this okay all right uh, so here is the first criterion and, and my plan is i'm going to apply this criterion uh, the, the three criteria to the problem that you're seeing uh, in front of you here okay uh, so my first criterion is the following at a free pin that is a pin that is not connected to the ground or roller if there are no external forces at that pin and if two bars intersect at that pin with both the bars being non-collinear then both of them are zero force members okay so this is the first criterion uh, keywords that you want to note here is that a free pin a free pin means that a pin that is not connected to a ground or a roller but it is just a pin that is connecting two bars together okay and the other word that you want to note here is that if the bars are non-collinear okay if both the bars are non-collinear then both of them are zero force members as the first criterion uh, second criterion when at a pin you have two non-collinear bars intersect and at that pin either a support reaction or an external force is collinear with one of the bars then the other one is a zero force member and uh, in this case uh, you see that um, this is not necessarily a free pin because at that pin you could either have a support reaction or an external force acting and if there are two non-collinear bars intersecting at that pin and if the support reaction or the external force is collinear with one of the bars then we can say that the other one it is a zero force member okay uh, then i come to the third criterion which is essentially a generalization of the second criterion okay in the third criterion here is the following this is sometimes the most effective of the three criteria to identify zero force members when three bars intersect at a pin, and importantly, this is at a free pin, okay, a pin that is not connected to the ground or a roller, and if no external forces are acting on that pin, and if two of the three bars are collinear, the third one becomes a zero force member, okay, so in this case, there are three bars intersecting, okay, and if two of the three are collinear, then what happens? The third non-collinear bar okay that becomes the uh, zero force member once again me and my straight lines okay i'm sure you're having a very small chuckle at this uh, all right so the third one becomes a zero force member okay now i'm going to make use of all these uh, three criteria to to handle our problem on uh, obtaining zero force members by inspection only okay so let's take a look at our problem let me go back and pull up uh, my good friend from here okay so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring that down here. Okay. And when in doubt, you can always draw the pin diagram. Okay. So let, let me actually start drawing the pin diagram at each and every uh, pin and then we'll see. Okay. I'm going to start with the letter A because that's the first letter of the alphabet. All right. Of the English alphabet. Okay. So let me draw the pin at uh, A. So if I draw the free body diagram of the pin A, okay, what are the forces acting? So here is the pin at A right and then i have the force p1 which is acting vertically down then i have all of these bars are assumed to be in tension i have the force fab as i said fab is the same as fba okay then i have the force fad right all of them are assumed to be in tension then i have the force fae and lastly i have the force fai and my first suspicion is, okay, hey, there are too many things going on at this pin. It does not seem to satisfy any of the three criteria. And importantly, you can also make a mental note and say, okay, hey, if I sum forces in the X direction, or if I sum forces in a Y direction, are any of these summing up to be equal to zero? If that is not the case, then just move on, okay? So I'm not able to identify any zero force members, so I just have to move on, okay? Uh, so then what do I do? I go to the pin at B, okay? 
so then I draw okay free body diagram of pin at B what are the forces acting okay uh, so if I look at the pin at B so here is the pin you can just draw the pin as a small dot okay it is not necessary to draw it as an actual pin as such if you want you can draw it as a small circle but we're ignoring the dimensions of the pin essentially okay so I have the force FAB or FBA as I said it doesn't make a difference this is FAB or FBA then here is the force from FBC okay I have a premonition that something interesting is happening at this pin then I have this force FJB okay and you can immediately recognize okay hey this satisfies the third criterion okay so based on a third criterion okay satisfied here okay and in this case you know there was no criterion satisfied i'm sorry okay that was for pin at a pin at b third criterion is satisfied why do i say that is because uh, if i look at fbc and fab they're collinear fjb is non-collinear which means that this is a free pin so there are no forces acting on this pin in order of support reactions of any kind which means that the force fjb is going to be equal to zero which means that i can say okay hey this guy is gone so f j b is equal to zero and then i can also say that f b c is equal to f a b okay so that is also something that i can say so that's a zero force member so uh, i just keep a tally of all of these by saying okay uh, we have found out that f j b or f b j is a zero force member okay then i move to the pin at c and uh, to do so i'm going to bring my figure once again uh, so every time i find a zero force member i put a tally mark on it and then i say okay let me start bringing my figure down here okay then i look at the free body diagram of uh, pin c fbd of pin c okay and uh, once again we do the same thing as before this is um, typically i don't draw any of these free body diagrams okay typically when i look at a problem i just directly note in my own mind i keep drawing the free body diagrams and then I say, okay, hey, does it satisfy criterion 1, criterion 2, or criterion 3? And that way it's much faster for me, okay? I just look at it and then I can tell, okay, FJB is a zero force member, okay? Or FEI is a zero force member. But for the benefit of uh, showing, okay, does it satisfy the criteria, I'm drawing the pin diagrams. And when in doubt, always draw the pin diagrams. There is nothing wrong with that. All right, I'm going to the pin at C. Uh, so if I look at the pin at C... What are the forces? FBC or FCB is the same thing. Okay. And then FCK. Uh, and then FCF. FCF. FCK. And then I have FCG. Okay. Too many things going on here. Does not satisfy any of the criteria. Okay. So I'm just going to bring out my uh, thing from here. So no criterion is uh, satisfied here. Uh, none of the criteria are satisfied here. Okay, so that's also something that I recognize and then I move on. Okay All right, so let me go to the pin free body diagram at D. I'm just following the alphabetical order here. Okay Free body diagram of the pin D And once again, if you forget the three criteria all you have to do is okay take a pin diagram draw the pin free body diagram do the sum of the forces in the x direction do the sum of the forces in the y direction if you find out that the sum of the forces in the x direction lets you have one of the forces to be equal to zero then that becomes a zero force member so for example if i had gone here right uh, i could have done the following i could have said okay hey sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero and i could have obtained f j b is equal to zero so this is the same as saying that the third criterion is satisfied okay and then i could have said that sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero and then that will tell me that f b c is equal to f a b so we are still using the physics here it is just that instead of doing this for each and every pen and wasting the rest of our lives doing it 
we understand that okay there are shorter ways a uh, shortcuts in which i can quickly do the problem okay so that is the only reason why we have these three criteria otherwise i can keep doing the sum of the forces and some of the uh, in the x and y directions at each and every pin and i will get the same answer there is nothing wrong with it of course if you have a lot of time then certainly go for it okay uh, pin free body diagram at d let me do that here uh, very quickly uh, so at d what are the things that i have i have fad i would like this to be aligned with the pin all right so that is fad then let me take this guy and then probably extend that and i can draw fdh okay and then i have fdi okay and then if this was fad or fda it makes no difference now watch very carefully even though fdi is not perpendicular to the line of uh, fad and fdh it still satisfies the third criterion right where i see that okay fdi is non-collinear with fdh and fad and then the pin at d is a free pin because it is not connected to the ground nor does it have any forces acting on it which means that according to the third criterion i can say that this is a zero force member okay which means i immediately knock it off of my calculations that's a zero force member okay so satisfy the third criterion so fdi is equal to zero and then f dh is equal to fad okay and uh, let me say that the criterion that they satisfied was the third criterion most of the times you would either see the first or the third criterion you would uh, very rarely see the second criterion the second criterion uh, you got to be careful it will happen typically when you have like rollers and so on okay all right so then i bring my figure with um, two of these these fellows gone i still have a good amount of work to do so i'll bring that down here i keep doing this at each and every pin and whenever you are in doubt you can always go back and check okay what is the third criterion okay does it satisfy the third criterion at pin d yes of course it does okay uh, so i go to the pin at e okay so let me draw the free body diagram of uh, pin e okay all right what are the forces acting at the pin at e okay so i have f a e and f e j okay so they are drawn this way i'm just going to extend this because they are drawn along the same line as you can see here f e j and then f e a or f a e it makes no difference okay and then i have f e i automatically you recognize that okay f e j and f e a are collinear the pin at e is a free pin because there are no external forces acting on it there are no support reactions on it and so this non-collinear bar f e i has to be the zero force member okay so this tells me that f e i is the zero force member and then it also tells me that f e a is equal to f e j and this is once again based on the third criterion okay so i'm going to copy that and bring that down here okay so at pin e the third criterion is satisfied and because of that i end up having this guy gone that's gone now what i'm automatically going to do is the following i'm going to do a little bit of jumping around okay i'm going to go to the pin at i three body diagram of pin at i and the nice thing is because i already know that uh, there are uh, two uh, zero force members which are attached at uh, which which were uh, fei and fdi i don't need to draw them when i'm drawing the pin at i okay so here is what i'm going to do so here is my pin diagram at i okay i have fai which is drawn this way okay then i have fij and then i have f i h and if you want you could draw this in a dotted line and say okay hey that is equal to zero which means that it's not going to enter my consciousness uh, when i'm doing the force balance okay f e i and f d i okay i'm going to make them as uh, dotted lines so that um, we know they're zero force members okay 
So these are both zero force members, which is automatically known to us. This is zero. This is also zero, which tells me once again that, okay, if I look at the pin at I, F, I, H, and I, J are collinear, and F, A, I is the non-collinear bar, the pin at I is a free pin, which means that there are no reaction forces or applied forces at that pin, and so F, A, I is going to be the zero force member. So this automatically tells me that and says, okay, F, A, I is the zero force member, so that F, I, J is equal to F, I, H, okay? And uh, this is also based on the third criterion. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and say, okay, hey, according to the third criterion, that creature is also gone, which means that this is gone. And immediately what I do is this. I go back to the pin at A. Okay, I go back to the pin at A. And then I bring that free body diagram back down. Okay, I copy that and I bring that free body diagram back down here. Okay. And then I see, okay, hey, based on this simplification, I had a couple of things that were zero for me, right? Or at least one of them was gone. So FAI was zero. Does this tell me anything more? Is FAD zero or FAE zero or FAB zero? Still no criteria is satisfied here. So the only thing I could found out, I could have found out is that FAI is zero, okay? So uh, no more useful information, okay? So no more useful at pin a okay so which means that i'm just going to go to move, go move go and move on all right so always go back and look at it and uh, one thing i want to also point out okay um as is the following when i looked at the force fai from the perspective of pin a it did not seem like a zero force member, but when I look at it from the perspective of the pin I, I find out that FAI is a zero force member and once a zero force member, always a zero force member. Okay, so maybe let me write down the statement before I bring my figure down here. Okay, uh, so when we looked at, so here, here is what I'm saying. When, we, when I looked at the pin at, uh, when I looked at FAI earlier, when I was uh, doing the pin at A, right, when I was analyzing the pin at A, you see that I did not uh, see any satis a criterion satisfied, so I just moved on with my life, right? But then now I see that, okay, uh, let me maybe bring a little more color to your lives by saying, okay, these are the things uh, that are getting satisfied, much at the risk of uh, not drawing straight lines and so on. But then when I look at the uh, same um, bar, but from the perspective of a different pin, and I find that, okay, hey, this is a zero force member, then it stays as a zero force member, okay? And uh, that's what I exactly did. I went back to the uh, pin at A, and then I said that, okay, from this perspective, FAI is a zero force member, okay? And once again there. All right, so I'm going to write this down. So when we looked at bar AI, from the pin free body diagram of A, we did not know it was a zero force member to begin with, but when looking at the free body diagram of uh, pin i we found out that ai is indeed a zero force member which means that from the perspective of the pin at a as well so from perspective of pin A as well, AI will act as a zero force member. Okay, so once a zero force member, always a zero force member, no matter what the perspective, no matter which pin you view it from. Okay, so once a zero force member 
always a zero force member no matter which perspective you look at it from okay so this is something that you want to really make sure you understand all right so let me go back and bring my figure down once again and i have uh, done many of these things yet right uh, so a lot of these bars are now vanishing slowly <laughs> all right uh, what else is going on um if i look at uh, so in order to just highlight this point right if i'm looking at the pin at j for example okay so if i'm looking at the pin at j pin f b d at j right if i draw that pin free body diagram even though it need not have looked like f j b was a zero force member from the perspective of pin j it is still a zero force member because i looked at it from pin b so it stays as a zero force member okay so if i look at the pin free body diagram at j this is f j b which is zero okay do i have anything else going on for me here uh, maybe let me scoot this up and then write this uh, here okay then i have two other bars uh, from the pin at j which go this way and then which go this way okay so this is f j f then this is f j e and then i have uh, a couple of other bars as well which come horizontally from the pin at j there are too many things going on in this pin uh, something that doesn't uh, tell me anything useful okay so this is f j k f j i okay so this is the pin diagram at j there is nothing told to me here which means that i can just move on okay so nothing useful gained from here we already knew that f j b is a um, zero force member so nothing useful here Okay, which automatically should tell you hey if i have a cluster of more than three bars at a pin or if there are like too many things going on at a pin then the chances are more or less that there is uh, no zero force member at that pin okay and then maybe just look at it from the perspective of the pin that is opposite to it or nearby it or it's connecting two of the bars or connecting one of the bars to the other pin so if, for example if i looked at it from the perspective of b then fjb was a zero force member but from the perspective of j that did not look like a zero force member but it still remains a zero force member okay uh, then let me go to two more of uh, these pins and then we'll wrap up this particular problem okay i'm going to go to the pin at uh, f so fbd of uh, pin f okay so this is my next step and you automatically know okay what is going to happen right i hope you're seeing it so i'm drawing the free body diagram of pin at f i'm going to have f f c and f f j okay so f f c and then f f j and then i have f f k which is coming out at an angle here f f okay and you immediately recognize okay hey this is going to satisfy the third criterion wherein i have two of them collinear the third one is non-collinear there are no external forces on this pin there are no support reactions on this pin this is a free pin okay this is excellent news so this guy is gone okay that's history and i'm going to say okay ffk is zero and ffj is equal to f fc and this is based on the third criterion okay so i'm going to bring that down here so let me bring that down here so i'm going to copy that and bring that down here okay then uh then i move on okay i'm going to go to the pin at g okay let's do that so the free body diagram of the pin g okay and there is no need for you to go alphabetically if you see okay there is a pin automatically that satisfies one of the criteria just directly go there right nothing is going to uh, be the issue in that uh, so a pin at g uh, i'm going to have f g c f g l and f g k as you can see okay so here is the pin at g so f g c i'm just going to draw them out this way so this is f g c f g l and then f g k
okay and then i automatically once again see that okay hey fgl and fgc are collinear fgk is non-collinear to both of them there are no external forces on the spin there are no pin reactions acting as well which means that this is a zero force member okay so i can see that f g k is equal to zero and then f g c is equal to f g l and the third criterion is satisfied okay so i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste that uh, down here okay and then immediately i go to my figure and i auto i knock it off i say okay hey uh, this guy is gone and then the next thought that should be striking in your mind is okay hey let me go and look at the pin at k okay so let me go to the pin at k let me copy my figure here okay so i'm going to copy that and let me bring it down here okay so let me draw the free body diagram of pin k of uh, pin k all right so what are the forces acting on this pin i have f k c then i have f k l and f k j or f j k it doesn't make any difference what you call it f j k of course you got to call it as the bar that it belongs to you cannot just call this as f a b or something but you see i can call it as f j k or f k j it makes no difference to me okay then immediately i see okay hey is there something suspicious going on here uh, of course you can you can draw the other two bars if you want but they're zero force members anyways right so there is not much to uh, draw there you can draw them as dotted lines okay so let me draw that as dotted lines those are zero force members anyways so i don't even need to include them but i'm still drawing them out here but i immediately see that okay fkc is a zero force member because it's non-collinear with the other two bars and there are no other forces acting on the pin at k okay so this tells me that um, and i forgot uh, the pin at j um, there was another force that was also acting here i apologize i just see it now okay there is this force uh, p2 which was supposed to be acting at that particular pin and even though there is this force uh, p2 which is collinear with jb jb is still zero okay that's something you want to keep in mind uh, so here FKC is zero because of the third criterion used. Okay, since an FJK is the same as FKL. And uh, I can knock this off of the figure here as well. And then I come and say, okay, hey, this is because the fact that the third criterion is satisfied. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the reason here. Then immediately what I do is I go back to the pin at C, the free body diagram of the pin at C. Okay, I had drawn it previously. Uh, it is uh, probably somewhere here. Uh, let's see. Uh, pin at C. Where are you? Uh, here. All right. So I'm going to go to the pin free body diagram at C. That was not what I meant to do. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to bring this down here. Okay. I'm going to bring that down here. And then I'm going to see, okay, is something uh zero here for me okay so i can immediately see that okay this guy is zero for me okay but does this tell me anything about any of the other bars it still doesn't tell me whether fcg bc uh, or, or cf is a zero or not okay because they are automatically not going to be zero because i have to see that if i sum forces in x direction i'm going to have components from fbc fcf and fcj none of them are going to be equal to zero. If I sum forces in the y direction, I'm going to have a component from FCF and FCG. None of them are going to be zero. Okay, so which means that uh, nothing more useful can be gained from here. Okay, and lastly, let me draw the pin free body diagram at L and then let's see if there is something else going on there. I think we, we do pretty much everything else. Okay, so let me draw the pin free body diagram at L. And then that will be the end of uh, this particular problem. Um, of course, uh, we just saw only the third criterion in this problem, but there are other problems where you will see the other criteria as well. Do not forget criterion number one. Criterion number one is also something that you will commonly see in many problems. Okay, uh, let's see. So uh, what is happening at L? I have a roller reaction. I have FLK and an FGL. Okay, so at L, 
I'm going to have a support reaction from the roller, okay? So I'm going to call this as L suffix Y and then F L K. And then I'm going to have F L G or F G L. It doesn't make a difference as to what you call it. And then this is F uh, L G, okay? Now uh, this is a roller reaction. And obviously there is nothing going on here, so nothing more useful uh, to be seen here. So none of the three criteria are satisfied. Which means that I just have to move on. And I think the only other pin that I haven't looked at is the pin at uh, H, which I can draw here very quickly if I look at the free body diagram of the pin H. Okay, there is still a lot of things going on here at the pin and edge. So there is uh, no criterion that will typically be satisfied. Uh, but I just want to draw it anyways. There is a pin reaction. H, Y, H, X. Okay, then I have F, H, I. That's the force due to the bar. I, H. Then I have F, H, D. Which is uh, going on this way. You obviously see that there are forces in the X and the Y directions. They don't necessarily cancel each other out. Which automatically tells me that, okay, hey, um, none of them are zero force members here. Okay, so none of the criteria is satisfied here as well. Uh, let me copy down uh, this guy and then paste it down here on uh, the pin at H. Okay, so none of the uh, criteria are satisfied for the pin at H. Uh, maybe my... Writing is jumbled up here. Well, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so that's uh, essentially the situation for the uh, pin at uh, H. Okay, uh, let me put a small box around here. Okay, so that's the pin at H, and then pin at C, we automatically looked at it earlier. And so this is the end of the story. We have found out so many zero force members. In this problem, there was only one of the criteria that was uh, most evident in all of the bars. But, but be careful in the future, you will have criteria number one and criteria number two as well. So you have to look at each and every one of them. Okay, you have to be very careful when you're analyzing each of these bars. Look at it from the perspective of all the three criteria. Here is what I would do. Write down the three criteria separately on a piece of paper. Draw the pin free body diagram of each and every pin and then inspect and see okay does it satisfy the first criterion that you have written down does it satisfy anything here satisfying the second criterion you have written down or the third criterion you have written down and so on and so forth okay so as as you keep doing that many many times then this becomes uh, almost like a, a habit or a second thought okay uh, all right it becomes an automatic part of your life uh, just looking at the the, the the process and then saying okay hey these are all zero force members all right and uh, the idea is, uh, why are we doing these things, of course? Uh, we're doing this because um, if a bar is carrying a force of zero, then why should I spend my time analyzing that bar? If I can find out by inspection itself that, okay, hey, this is not of any use to my analysis at this point in time, I don't need to waste my time. Which is why we want to use this idea of inspection and then find out, okay, what are the zero force members by inspection so that I can spend my time on bars that actually desire and require my attention. Okay. And that's the only reason why we are doing this inspection criteria and all these things. All right. So that's the end of the problem. I hope um, these ideas were very clear to you. Um, once again, you know, the three criteria, you just have to keep in mind, write it down on a piece of paper. The first criterion is that if I have a free pin, which means a pin not connected to the ground or a roller, and if there are no external forces on that pin, and if two bars intersect at that pin with that bar being non-collinear with each other, then both of them are zero force members, okay? Second criterion is when I have a pin with a support reaction, and if the support reaction is collinear with one of the bars, the non-collinear bar is the zero force member. Third criterion is what we've been seeing very much so often in this particular problem. And we have exercised it many times. But always, when in doubt, draw the pin free body diagram. Set the forces in the x direction to be zero, y direction to be zero. 
and automatically you will figure out that okay hey one of them is a zero force member if it indeed is a zero force member all right and uh, that was uh, the last figure here in this uh, problem where we have all the zero force members marked all right uh, thank you for your time and patience uh, take care of yourselves bye bye